I think I closed any tabs. I didn't want showing. Unfortunately, I'm on my laptop. And you know, the weirdest thing with laptops is, because I've been using a um, an iMac for so long is the screen is so small and I'm just constantly like moving faces, people's faces to like different parts of the screen to access control. So um, bear with me here. Um, but yeah, who, who might be new to Salesforce or curious about Salesforce and I can talk just a little bit, just because I had talked about, or I'd mentioned that I'm gonna talk about, you know, is Salesforce right for you? Um, just because I won't say it can be divisive because, and again, I usually don't do a lot of like Salesforce oriented presentations in TechSoup. I try and make this part of my, you know, outside of work engagement, not about my actual job, um, but I do work in the Salesforce ecosystem a lot. So for the most part, um, that's kind of how I know Rachel for the last, I think two years, no, no more than that. I'm not gonna say it five years now. Um, but yeah, I mostly interact with people that are passionate or invested in Salesforce. But sometimes you hear from people who aren't that invested in it. They might have experimented or dabbled with Salesforce um, and might not have, have had the best experience. Uh, so just in that context, I think I did want to touch upon what might make your organization a better candidate for Salesforce than other organizations? What are you looking at re realistically if you decide to take that leap? Um, and then we can actually look into Salesforce and the program mod management module and what it really means to have like these different modules. Like, you know, what does it even mean? Like in Salesforce, everything, so on and so forth. So going back into history, Salesforce started out as just like a sales tool, a sales platform that was meant to be you know, a CRM, a database or Rolodex for organizations to um, manage kind of their clients, um, manage the, the companies that they worked with, the people that they, uh, at those companies that they were working with, you know, keeping a database of, of course, all their customers um, and also all the sales, et cetera, that they're making. Um, over time, Salesforce try to make the platform a little bit more flexible, like, hey, okay, beyond what we let you track in the system, you can go ahead and track other things that might be relevant to your business, to your business module, within the context of, of course, the people that you're selling to and so on and so forth. So it was like really opening the floodgates and allowing folks to extend the database to do whatever they wanted to do. And fast forward a couple of years, companies and in other industries outside of the more traditional for-profit industries were finding ways to tap into and use the Salesforce platform. So instead of tracking your customers, quote unquote, you could be tracking your donors, you could be tracking, uh, I, I'm talking about the nonprofit use case here. Uh, you could be talking about, you know, people you're providing services to, you could be tracking your volunteers, you could be tracking information about them, where do they live, who's in there, you know, who lives with them, um, instead of tracking the sales that you made to them, because as a nonprofit, you may, may, or, may or may not be selling anything, you could be tracking, hey, how much, what are the mission sales I've done, i.e. what are the donations that I've received from them? So you're again doing sort of a, you know, revenue tracking or tracking a pipeline, not in terms of money coming in for sales of products and services, but just money coming in in terms of donations. Um, you could be tracking money coming up to the uh, terms of grants, et cetera. And therein with people, organizations coming up with creative users of the Salesforce platform, um, that really is how they developed sort of a use case for Salesforce in the nonprofit industry. And then that went on to Salesforce in the higher ed industry, Salesforce in the K-12 industry, Salesforce in all the other industries, but then they started creating more customized industry targeted versions of the Salesforce platform. Salesforce in healthcare, Salesforce in e-commerce and so on and so forth. Um, so a lot of this evolution and development of the Salesforce platform has occurred um, in terms of being driven by the organizations and the customers more than being driven by the company in itself. Um, and kind of as a result of that is Salesforce gets to benefit from all these organizations out there, you know, coming up, coming across the platform, um, figuring out use cases, figuring out how to implement it, and then Salesforce learning from them and developing industry solutions or industry specific solutions catered to you know, those specific industries or even segments within those industries or use cases within those industries. Um, so over time, of course, as the Salesforce platform expanded, think of how, you know, from 
I'm not an original iPhone user. I stepped in around like six or something. So I'm not the best person to give this example. But at some point from iPhone two to three, the app store came into being. So suddenly the iPhone wasn't just, this is my camera roll and this is my contacts and this is my email. It was also, hey, these are all the different apps that you know other companies out there are creating. Install the app store, download the app, use it for whatever they want you to do it with it. Salesforce came up with something called the App Exchange, which is kind of their app store. So beyond what you could do with extending the platform using what came out of the box, you could also install apps or business apps that you know you could download from the app store and now you can use it for whatever the, whatever purpose that that app is supposed to serve. Is it integrating with your marketing automation solution? Is it doing event management in Salesforce? Is it doing um, project management, Salesforce, whatever some enterprising company out there had come up with in terms of using the capabilities of the Salesforce platform to extend it from the original functionality of just tracking your accounts and contacts and the organizations you're doing business with. With all this evolution that we're talking about at the very core, Salesforce is still that original platform of tracking accounts, contacts, some core information with the ability to extend that database to track whatever you need to, with the ability to write code to do any custom development that you want to do that is specific to your organization, your needs, your aspirations, the ability to use platform's core capabilities to um, do automation, automate communication, come up with your own email templates and branded email templates and so on and so forth. These were all like core elements of the Salesforce platform that A, still remain the same and B, are common across all the industries, all the use cases that the Salesforce platform uses it for. So when we talk about using the Salesforce platform or product versus using any other solution that is developed for a specific industry, the big difference is with the Salesforce platform, you are starting at that core sales, what's called the sales cloud platform or the enterprise platform that Salesforce comes with and then installing customizations to make it or adapt it to your industry. Whereas for other solutions that might be competing solutions in the nonprofit space and the you know, services space and so on and so forth, it might be very custom designed to address a specific need. So that's kind of the trade-off. That's why a lot of the times when people start using Salesforce, it might be confusing. It might be a little complicated to understand. It might not be as they might call it, not intuitive. And that's because really using the same platform that's being used by so many different industries, so many different organizations all over the world, all over the space, right? Um, whereas the other one is might be really designed for kind of your use case, uh, kind of to address the specific need that you have. On the flip side, why people might still go with Salesforce, why they might be so committed to that platform, why they might be drinking that Kool-Aid is because you're getting all the investment and all the innovation that's being made to cater to teams at, you know, whether it's the Red Cross, whether it's Amazon, whether it's Dell, whether it's the Dell Foundation, you imagine whether it's um, MD Anderson Cancer Center, like they're all using the same platform that you're using. So Salesforce is making all these investments in the same platform that is available to a small nonprofit to a Fortune 50 organization. And you get benefit from all those things. But that just means you're using this platform that with some customization for your industry, um, you might have to like spend a little bit of time understanding how it's designed, how it's structured, and how it might need to be customized to meet your specific needs. And then there's all the other capabilities that we often find other products aren't able to deliver in terms of, hey, I just wanna come up with strange, weird email communications that I need to automate, that I need to send out that are very specific to my organization that none of my other organizations might need to do. So a industry solution that's designed to meet a specific use case may not be able to offer you that. But with the Salesforce platform, with the right professionals, the right skills, you can achieve, you know, really, um, I won't say possibilities are limitless, but if you're new and starting out, it is quite limitless. Um, any questions before I kind of go on? No, it looks like you can just dive okay. right in. Awesome. Okay. So the in the nonprofit space, Salesforce's first release was called the Nonprofit Success Pack. 
it was very focused on, I, I guess it was called a nonprofit startup pack and then evolved over multiple years into what's now called a nonprofit success pack. It was very focused towards fundraising. There was also a volunteer management module that was included at some point. More recently, they kind of split that out. So you still get the fundraising elements and the grant tracking elements, but you install the volunteer profit modules separately. Um, at some point they came up with sort of a foundation management solution that I believe was an acquisition. And then more two recent introductions in the nonprofit space in the last one year has been a case management offering, which is a paid solution. And then the prog uh, program management module, which is a free solution. Um, they've so I won't say they've struggled with, but it's taken a while to come up with this because again, there are so many different organizations that collaborate on something like the PMM. And a lot of these solutions are developed by, you know, the industry itself. Lots of nonprofits will get together and share practices of, hey, this is how we're doing this. This is how we're doing this. What do we have in common? How do we kind of package that together and create an app out of it? And then that can be uh, subsequently, you know, put on the, the marketplace, on the app exchange, and any nonprofit organization can go ahead and download and start using it. So the goal is always to keep, provide a bit of a framework for any nonprofit that might be starting out with Salesforce to be able to leverage right away. Um, and then that organization can then pick it up from there and customize it to their specific needs and continue using it in that sense. Uh, so the program management module, free of cost, gives you a ba basic infrastructure and guidance around, um, you, you know, how you might go about tracking data around your programs, around services that you're delivering and around the impact. And then you, you use the rest of the Salesforce platform to achieve everything else you need. Um, in terms of cost, I mentioned how the PMM is free. The Salesforce platform may cost money depending on how much you want to use it. So all 501c3 nonprofit organizations within the US and equivalent organizations abroad can benefit from 10 free licenses of the Salesforce platform. There's a grant application that you'd fill out, et cetera. Um, tons of information about that on the internet. Shout out if you want to know, I can share information around that. That'll give you access to the Salesforce platform. And then um, you can install the program management module on top of that and start using it right away. Hey, Mary Jane. Hey, do you know how much it costs to add on? Like if you have the free 10, the and you need PMM? to add two people. Oh um, no, the just the platform itself. Then we shouldn't be offering Salesforce pricing, but I, they're pretty transparent yeah, I about understand Salesforce that. licenses. So I think if you go, uh, if you search for, give me one second here, Salesforce, like that one, I think they have pricing advertised. That I believe varies between four fifty to five fifty per year per user. Okay. Are I'm just putting I'm putting it in a grant budget and I was just wondering. Gotcha. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, yeah. It's it's kind of right here on this page. That's the nonprofit cloud pricing. And you would probably be using you could use this one, the sales cloud enterprise plus NPSB, and that's thirty-six dollars per month. So thirty-six times twelve. Nope. Four hundred and thirty two. That's the exact amount. Thanks for license. Awesome. And again, as I mentioned, you get 10 free licenses. If you qualify, you submit the grant um, and you can use that for like 10 employees. And then beyond that, hopefully, if, if you're growing beyond that, that means Salesforce is working out for you. Uh, so at that point, it becomes quite a compelling um, you know, investment by those additional licenses. Awesome. So let's look at the program management module. You can use this if you got Salesforce with the nonprofit success pack to do your fundraising. Um, you can install this on top of that same um, organization. Again, lots of organizations install tons and tons of different packages to address tons and tons of different needs. Um, a lot of them, for the most part, work together. Before the PMM, like me personally, like in my work with my clients, we would have built out a lot of these modules. Um, for our different clients to track the different things that they needed to. Now this package is available, so we had the ability to use this as well. So let's do kind of a quick little demo. When you log into Salesforce, you're on the kind of a home page. Everything is very customizable. So for the purpose of you know 
this spin up of PMM, what they did was they created a, they have a simple dashboard that can comes with the sales with the PMM that they've thrown in hopes on the home screen. On the right side, you can see today's tasks, some of the recent records that you kind of looked at on the right side. Um, and that's just kind of give you a quick start. You can always click into this dashboard. You can use Salesforce's reporting analytics capabilities to create additional reports that are very specific to your organization and your needs. You could potentially add those to the dashboard. I could say, hey, I want to add a component with another report. Um, say all program engagements by stage. And I want a donut chart for that. And I want to group it by the stage, et cetera. And once we create some additional data, that's going to make a little more, bit more sense. So I add that, I build out the dashboard even further. I go ahead and save those changes. I had done, when I go back to the home page at this point, it is gonna have that same dashboard with the additional chart that I put into it. Um, I can add, remove as needed. I can remove this dashboard altogether and put something totally different. Uh, all the customization capabilities of the Salesforce platform are available to us. So that's the home page. That's where you're gonna land into the ideas to put in focus, put front and center all the uh, insights and numbers and metrics that might be important to you or all, all the data that's important to you, which you can customize. If you have different programs, can mm -hmm. you customize that? I, I'm probably getting ahead of you, so. Yeah, let's let's hold that just a quick second. And since you brought it up, just remind me to bring it back, uh, just bring it back, back up again afterwards and we'll actually try and implement that as a demo. So I created just a smidge of test data before this. I do very little prep for <laughs> my presentation sometimes and really shows that's not a good thing. Um, but let's dive in just a little bit deeper. So everything in the Salesforce platform really centers and revolves around the contact object. The contact, that's your constituent, whether that's a donor, whether that's um, you know someone who's taking services from you, all of that sits in the center of the platform. All the information really centers around who are the people that we're dealing with and how they're engaging with our organization. Um, these are just some dummy, dummy contacts that come with any clean Salesforce organization. I'm just going to go ahead and add a few test contacts that we can start working with. So let's do a demo contact service once. Let's say this is someone you came to the organization, uh, they needed some sort of assistance or something of that sort, and we create a contact record for them. Say we have a mobile number for them. Let's do the one three, one three, one two, 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 four. We have an email for them. And let's say we have an address for them. So I'm using standard Salesforce contact function um, layouts and whatnot to key in some data about the person that I'm gonna start working with. Oops, oh, okay. I guess it doesn't have the household model. Let's create a contact or a little household for this person. Probably a good idea to use this alongside the nonprofit module because the nonprofit module, when you create a contact, if you don't specify, hey, what account they belong, to, it'll create a household record and put that person in it. And then that way, if you're adding more family members, you, they're all contained within that household unit. Um, this organization doesn't have the nonprofit success back. So it seems like it doesn't create accounts for you like the other one. So I'm just going to create this manually for now. But point to remember is use this with the NPSP solution. Okay, there we go. So now demo contact service one, whatever that is, is at the very center of my organization. And as I can see, any data related to programs and services is not here. So I'm gonna quickly customize that page layout. That gives you a little peek of customization capabilities, how easily you can add or remove data from a layout based on what you are using in the platform, what you're not using, how you want your fields laid out, how you want them placed, what sections you want them organized in all those standard Salesforce capabilities at your fingertips. Okay. 
Okay, while it's loading, I'm just gonna go ahead and, okay, so on one front, we're talking about entering our contacts into the database as you know they walk into the center. Uh, we could also automate creation of data if we're using a third-party tool, such as an online form that they can fill data into. And as soon as they submit like a form builder solution that integrates with Salesforce, they put in their own information, their own name, their own address, their own email, any other information you want to ask them, whether it's demographic information, information about their family, and we can use the capability, the automation capabilities of that third-party platform to also create those contacts and those households into the Salesforce platform. That way, that little bit of work that I did in terms of creating contact is completely automated. Um, so that's on one side, you are creating data off the people that you might be providing services to for the different programs and services that your organization offers. On the flip side, to be able to start tracking all this information about our programs and the services we're delivering, um, we also need to go ahead and create data around, hey, what are the programs that my organization is offering? What are the services that is delivering within those programs? So think of programs as this is kind of the overarching program that my organization offers. If you're creating a website for your organization, this is gonna be the most high level summary of these are the different programs that we're offering and how are they contributing towards the mission of my organization. So the, the test data that I created earlier today was around, um, let's say an organization providing some sort of services to families that are you know, just a little bit about the poverty line. Maybe it's for, again, focused on families. So focused on really helping families with like little kids. Um, just a kind of a sample use case that I came up against. So I created like three fictitious names of three programs that my organization might be managing. Um, one is helping employ um, families have food security. One is around helping them secure employment. One is giving them legal services. Um, Let's create a fourth one just for to see what that process looks like. So let's say my organization starts offering a new program. I need to now put that into Salesforce so that I can start tracking, hey, what are those services within this um, you know, program? And then who all are the people coming to my organization and availing of those services? So step one would be go to the programs tab. Let's click on the new program. And then I'm gonna come up with, I don't know if anyone has any suggestion, but Okay, let's say we do want to do something around mental health counseling. So now I'm going to try and get creative around naming it, but mm, let's just call it healthy families. Okay, so I have healthy families. Let's say if I'm just, again, there's a status field. Um, some of these fields come out of the box with the package. Again, it's just the idea of creating an infrastructure. I can go ahead and add like 10, 20, hundreds of additional fields. If I had hundreds of different attributes of data that I wanted to track about a pro at the program level, right? So right now I'm just using whatever's out of the box and maybe we can take a look later on about what it means to create your own custom field to track your own custom data. So let's say Healthy Families is a program that my organization is deliberating. Let's say it's in pilot mode or something. I'm gonna put a status of plan right now. I'm gonna give a short summary, uh, Healthy Families focuses on providing uh, mental health services to families in need. Target population for each one of them, I said the target population is families with two or more dependents under 18 that are within 20% of the federal poverty level. I just came up with that. I'm gonna leave that blank for now. I'm gonna leave the dates blank. I'm gonna hit save. That goes out and creates a program record with all the description that I have on the left, all the data attributes that I've put. And now I have the ability to say, hey, within this program, am I offering one service? Am I offering multiple different services? Let's say the multiple services, what are those services? So if I wanna look at, this as an example, some of the other programs that I created, fictitious programs, so we might have like a program that's an overarching program, but then we might be engaging in different activities within that program. So let's say for working families, the services that I provide are, and maybe I'm providing career counseling. I thought I had another one. Let's take a look at feeding families. So for feeding families, hey, I thought I had a lot more data. That's funny. Okay, so let's say for working families, I had career counseling. 
And then let's say I have a training program. So I'm gonna go ahead in there and I'm gonna say, this is job training, the program is working families, job training provides skills to working, no, to family members of working age. You know, measurement, I track that in say hours of trainings delivered and the services active. So now this helps me track maybe one or more services that might be provided within a certain program that my organization is carrying out. Um, if you have just the one service, that's fine. If you have more than one services, that's fine too. The platform offers you the flexibility of being able to track more than one services delivered within one program. Um, so going back to the Healthy Families um, program that we just created, let's say the first one is family counseling, you know, bringing the families in together, giving them counseling services together. So family counseling brings families in together to registered social workers on a weekly basis. Completely coming up with stuff. Question, Mary Jane? Um, so on the services, can you have um, like a service that goes with one program and another program? Like if you're trying to collect data or it's just per program? It wouldn't be ideal to, I'm sure you could like create your own, um, like instead of having a service directly relate to a program, I could create another object that says, hey, this is a service program, something, something. And that way I can link a service to multiple programs, but you might just be better off creating, I don't know, okay. I'm guessing you might have a specific use case, but I would just say, hey, just create two different services, even if they're very identical and just report them differently under the different programs. Um, and if a person is availing of, say that's counseling, say counseling is a service, and you give it as part of two different programs, and the same person avails of counseling in both those programs, really they've availed of like two different services as opposed to one service, right? Yeah. And that's okay. how you'd report on them. So okay. again, different organizations will do different things, and we've seen it all, done it all. Um, but if we are providing an infrastructure, we're gonna try and make it as intuitive and as common across different organizations as we can. And then being a Salesforce customer, Salesforce user, you can take the base object model and extend it to whatever you need it to be. Okay, awesome. Any other questions, please just unmute yourself and throw it at me. So let's say we went ahead and we created um, this service um, for family counseling. Now let's say we actually have a schedule that this counseling is offered within. Let's say it is offered Let's take a quick look at what that interface looks like. Okay, awesome. I want to pr provide a service schedule name. This is a custom interface that they've created. Uh, let's say weekly family counseling. I, okay, I don't have anything right now, but therapist. Okay, I have not, but let's take a quick second here. And let's say we want to track who is providing different services assuming there was one particular person. So I'm gonna create a demo, therapist, I'm gonna need an account. So let's put this under demo counseling center. Let's say this is a center that I'm partnering with. It is a, whoops, standard options. Leave that blank for now. Let's say I put in the address, I put in information, I put in an email, demo at therapist.com so on and so forth. Then I go ahead and create this contact record. And when I'm entering the service schedule, I should now be able to search for a demo therapist. They are the person who is, pro who is providing this particular service. Let's say we take at any point in time, 10 families, I'm gonna put that capacity. Uh, let's say all the services are one hour long, then I'm gonna provide kind of a schedule of this service being offered. So let's say this is a daily service um and ooh, quite a lovely interface and let's say it actually runs in perpetuity so i'm just going to choose a date that's like way out there so this is daily from 10 to 11 and i want to create and okay awesome just gonna leave it at that whoops what did i end oh i didn't select that did i daily one oh enter Oh, okay, my bad. First session is going to end today from 
10 to 11, and this is going to recur daily, and it's going to the recurrence is going to end on say the 30th, no 2030. Bingo, awesome. So it's going to create all these different sessions. Um, well, it's going to create 500 sessions, and then there'll probably be some additional like service that continues creating it. So it creates all these different sessions based on the schedule that I specified. It's giving me sort of a preview before it goes ahead and creates them. I say, yep, that looks great. I can drop some of them if I needed to, if like there's holidays or something. Um, and that's about it. So we'll look at the rest of that functionality in just a bit, but for now, I'm gonna go ahead and hit save and hopefully that kind of does the job. Now, if I had this service, for instance, from 10 to 11 in the morning and like two to three in the evening, I could create not one, but two service schedules, right? One for the morning and then one for the afternoon and provide its own recurring schedule. If I had every Monday at a certain time and every Wednesday at a certain time, again, I would create two service schedules and it would create um, service sessions accordingly. So that is me creating a program, adding services to it and optionally specifying a service schedule for it to then create some sort of a recurring series of sessions uh, where that service is then being offered. Now let's actually talk about tracking service participant or like people that are actually availing of these services. So at the chief level, the first thing I want to do is at the program level, I want to add the people that are in are participating in this program. So again, they've taken care of some of the basic functionality to do that. I have this button over here that says, hey, I want to add a contact to the program. And then I can search for all the contacts that might exist in the system. I created demo contact service one. I'm going to bring them in. They are a client. As you can see over here, they've given the choice of tracking clients, volunteers, service providers. You can actually go ahead and extend that list to track funder. Not that, that they would be a contact. Well, I guess they could be a contact within the program, but they're not really an enrollee in the program. You could have like supporting staff, you could have instructor, um, just anyone who is engaged in that program in one way or the other, you can add them to the program as an enrollment and then classify as what's their role in the delivery of this or execution of this program, right? So I'm gonna say this one is a client and they have, oh, and then they give us the ability to track an, an entire enrollment pipeline. So if you have a very transactional sort of a drop-in service, you'll probably end up just marking them as creating their data and marking them as enrolled each time. It's a sort of an application process. You can add them proactively um, as a status of applied and then use kind of reports dashboards to track kind of a pipeline of how they're moving through that program. If you're automating this, you know, you could kind of create an automation where it first creates um, the contact and then automatically creates that enrollment and gives them a status of say applied and whatnot. And then you can kind of track their entire um, journey through that program. Program cohorts, we'll talk about that in a second. This might get a little bit complicated, but you can also use the cohort functionality to group different clients together. So for something like, again, in a program that in an organization that's delivering programs around families, you could potentially create cohorts if like four family members are attending a counseling session, you could create a cohort of each of those family members, right? Let's say, we have a different program that is around job training and you are delivering job training to like one parent from each household or two parents from each household, but you're doing it in a classroom like environment, then you will create a cohort in a more traditional sense, having two, three, four, 10, 20 people that are attending the training together. Um, you could also have, I guess, cohorts of one, in which case it's an optional functionality, just don't use cohorts altogether. Uh, you could have cohorts based on geography, based on you know the date and time that they're taking the service, um, based on you know which year that they enrolled in. Like it's really completely flexible, um, but just kind of know that each participant will belong to one cohort. So it's not like you availing of the same service within the same program can belong to many cohorts. You know, you belong to one cohort, but how you segment your population is into cohorts is completely up to you if you want to use that functionality. I'm going to leave it blank for now. And let's say this person, Thomas Contact Service One, was enrolled today. So, with these clicks of a button, I have created a program engagement record. And if I click on that program engagement, here is where I'm going to be able to see 
within the context of demo contact service one, being enrolled in um, the Healthy Families program, what all kind of deliveries did we, you know, kind of in, um, make to this particular pro person? So, so we created that program engagement. And now if we were looking at say this specific service, um, oh, I thought I added a, did I not add service delivery? That's data to disappear on me. Freaky. Okay, I'm gonna create, Oh, there we go. Okay, that's family counseling, all those sessions. So let's say these sessions exist, all of that exists. Hmm. I wanna add a new participant because someone you enrolled. And that, since I created that program engagement, I can now go in and add this service uh, program participant as a service participant enrolled in this service. And again, I don't have cohorts, but if I had cohorts, I could use those cohorts to segment potentially a very long list of uh, potential program, you know, enrollees and add them to that service. So with that little button, I have now added them to this and I can use the little save button that is hiding off the screen, but I know it's that one. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit that. And now this person becomes a service participant. Awesome. So again, as I mentioned, it probably is a little bit, um, yeah, you kind of have to get used to, there's so much terminology around all the different things um, that we were talking about over here. All of these things along the top are called tabs. If you click on something like contacts, programs, program cohorts, these are all called objects. On the left side, when you, what we are on right now, the, you know, March 4th, 2021 weekly family counseling service session. That's called a record. We have all these little data points on a record. These in Salesforce are called fields that have field values. And then we have these little boxes on the right side um, that are called related lists, which are records that are in a different object, but they're related through relationship to this particular record. So conceptually, there's all these different concepts and functionalities and it takes a while to really build an understanding of conceptually what these things are. And when we're talking about when we talk about learning how Salesforce works, how Salesforce is laid out, you're really learning this new language. Um, which is why it takes a little bit of an adjustment and that goes back to my initial conversation on investing in Salesforce is investing in Salesforce learning. Um, so yes, and why do we do all that work? We do all that work because I mean, right now you're just seeing stuff that comes out of the box with the program management module. Let's see within a service session, I wanna track what was the inventory at the session or what was the support staff at the session? Like I just come up with crazy things I wanna track within the session, you know, where it says right now services delivered, I could have like five more related lists for like five pieces of custom data and that are only specific to my organization. And that may not be relevant in any other organization. Now, Salesforce platform, platform capabilities will give me the ability to extend the database to track those additional data points that will show up then as additional related lists. Um, so that flexibility is so unique to and so easy to achieve in the Salesforce platform, provided you have the right training and the right professionals to help you out. Um, okay, awesome. So we're in a service session. We have all the people that are enrolled in the specific program right here, I can go ahead and take their attendance. So if I had four family members enrolled in um, as a cohort in this particular service in a certain service offering, those four names would show up here. And I can go ahead and say, hey, they were present. There's an unexcused absence, excused absence. If I wanted to customize the status options, I can go on the back end. Let's actually try doing that right now. Let's say there is a, we wanna add a new, attendance status that's different from present, excuse, unexcused. Or let's say I don't care about excuse or unexcused, either they're present or they're absent. So I actually wanna condense that into one. I can go into the Salesforce backend. I can say, hey, I wanna find the hmm, status field. I wanna see what are the different options there and I'll replace it with my own options that are relevant to me. So over here, I'm gonna say, whoops, 
So we're not looking for service session, we're looking for service delivery, I think. Attendance status, perfect. So let's say I don't need unexcused absence, that's not relevant to me. Let's say I wanna add absent, no show, canceled, mm, dropped. Let's say they dropped in a certain session on the track, which session did they drop in? So I go ahead and make a little bit of customization on the back end. Let's go ahead and refresh the screen. And if I remember correctly, those changes ought to inherit down here. We have present, excuse absence, absent, no show, cancel, dropped. We can go ahead and say, hey, this person is actually absent. And it goes and nullifies those hours. It saves their attendance status. And now that has added to the service deliveries component right there. So if I had four people, I can quickly take attendance of four different people, track who showed up, who did not show up, and all of that shows up here. As we are in the process of like this little bit of demo that I did, we created an additional program. We added services to that program. We created people that are gonna be enrolled in the program. We enrolled them in the program. We created a sequence of sessions that are being, uh, you know, occurring as part of that delivering a certain service. And then we actually took attendance of the people who were enrolled in that service um, in that time. So, and believe it or not, everything that I've done right now is kind of the hard way of entering data. And there are so many ways of automating, simplifying, uh, synchronizing and whatnot, um, which we haven't even kind of looked into. So for instance, as the bulk service deliveries um, functionality, which I actually haven't quite used. Okay, so let's say I wanted to, hmm, I'm gonna be looking at this with y'all service. Okay, right now I've only enrolled them in one particular program, but let's say a client came in, they attended. Let's quickly go ahead and enroll this person in one or two more programs, and then that might give us a good sense of how that works. So let's say demo contact one was enrolled in, okay, we already enrolled them in family counseling. Let's also enroll them in job training. So in the job training program, first I'm going to uh, sorry, in the Working Families program, I'm going to add this person as a program enrollment. They are a client. They are enrolled. I'm not going to put them in a cohort. Um, and then let's say we're going to enroll them in the job training service. So I'm going to put in demo contact service one. Actually, we're going to track that use the bug service delivery. So now the same contact is enrolled in two different uh, programs. And let's say they came in, they actually availed of services from two different programs. So I'm going to say, hey, I want to, as part of their working families enrollment, they avail of job training on March 4th in using one hour of service. And at the same time or on the same day, they also participated in healthy families where they attended family counseling on March 4th and attended one hour of counseling. So using kind of this bulk entry wizard, we're actually tracking, creating two records at the same time. And this could be from two records, it could be like 20 records at the same time. So this is out of the box creation uh, that comes with the program management model. Um, Y'all can, if you have developer resources or like skill resources. You can even create other customizations to mass create records, mass seek attendance, and all those wonderful things and really simplify your data entry and creation and also uh, you know, maximize your use of the Salesforce platform. So let's say your entire organization, 20 to 50 different employees are all logged into Salesforce or all tracking data uh, for all the different you know, constituents that they're working with, clients that they're working with, services that they're delivering, and you might be the director of programs. So the chief program officer, you're just seeing all this data being created. You're sitting and writing your grant report and whatnot, and you need to see some top level statistics around everything that's being done at your organization. Are you just kind of keeping, keeping track of operations and how things are going? As they're creating programs, you can be sitting on your 
your computer in Salesforce with your own reports and dashboards. Um, do a quick kind of a refresh and okay. I need to explore these charts, but right here I hit refresh and suddenly I can see for family counseling, one hour of service because we just entered one hour of service has been delivered on job training, one hour of service has been delivered. And then you can actually drill down into that report and say, okay, who were the clients that delivered this report? Um, sorry, delivered this service. And when was it delivered? What were the statuses and so on and so forth? So again, very small data set, but if 20, 50 people are creating data at the same time, you hit that refresh button once, it's gonna roll up and add up data for all 20, 50 people. And this is using Salesforce's um, reporting capabilities and platform where you can slice and dice data differently, decide what data we need to report on, go ahead and add metrics as you need to, average them out, figure out the maximum, you know, all the functions available to you and then arrange them, chart them, and put them on the dashboard. So all of that kind of rolls up. We can also use Salesforce again, as I mentioned, standard Salesforce uh, reporting capabilities to create your own reports, your own charts, calculate the metrics that are relevant to you. So say I wanted to do, hey, I want to track, well, okay, let me see what I can come up with on the spot. But let's say I want to track, create a report on service deliveries, I, I say, hey, I want to go to I go to the reports tab. I want to create a new report. I want to report on service deliveries. Uh, let's say I want to do service deliveries and broken it down by the client or something like that. Let's say I want to break down how many services am I delivering based on where the clients are located or something like that. So what I can do is I can, I'm going to report on service deliveries broken down by a client. And let's say I want to break it down by the zip code that they're from. I can go into the reporting interface. I can say, hey, I'm going to pull some data points in, but I want to group this data by the zip code of, on the client record. So in the client record, I pop in zip code. It creates a grouping. Right now, I just have the one client. So there's just going to be one bucket. Uh, and then over here, I'm going to have all the service deliveries that were delivered. So let's say unit of measurement over here was hours. And then what was the and then quantity. So I have the quantities, everything is in hours. Let's say I had some that were hours and some that were, um, you know, units delivered, et cetera. So maybe instead of, I actually wanna create a grouping by units as well. I pop that up here. Quantity by default, if you add a metric, it's gonna sum it. Let's say I also want the average and the maximum. In. Let's throw it all there, hit apply. Let us save and run this report. I'm gonna call this service deliveries by a client zip code. So I'm gonna pop it in any folder for now. Let's save it. And then let's create like a bit of a charting mechanism. So let's say I had clients by lots of different clients and lots of different zip codes. Um, all those zip codes just show up on the left side and summary of all the, well, let's say this is all taking hours into consideration, but let's say I wanna break it out by unit of measurement and zip code. So of 77002, of all the services that are delivered by the hour, how many hours have I delivered? Of all the services that are delivered by units, how many units have I delivered? Of all the services that are delivered by, you know, if I'm doing food distribution, I'm measuring it in pounds of food that I've given out. How many pounds of food have I given out? Um, all of that would be kind of broken out here and and shown in the report in the chart. Let's go ahead and save this. And let's say I want this on my home dashboard. So I can go to dashboards. I can find the program management homepage dashboard, edit that dashboard, and add a component. Choose the report that I just made. I'll just use the chart that I added on the report itself. Rearrange it as needed. And there I have yet another metric that's important to me that I want on my fingertips. I can have many different dashboards. Say one is like you're on your grant reporting. One is like operation reporting. Um, one is demographic reporting. So again, using the full capabilities of the platform, 
to create all the reporting that you need, group it in by whatever context you want to, and make it accessible however you need to. Um, Mary Jane, you kind of mentioned what if I wanted to say filter down by specific programs. So I'm not completely sure of all the reports here. So let's see if that works. But let's say I want to add some filters to this dashboard to say, let's do we have program? Perfect. Let's say I want to be able to break down the reporting based on the different programs that I'm running. Um, I'm going to see if I can do program name in here. Hmm. I guess I cannot. Okay, so probably some of the charts that I have don't, from a data perspective, align. Can I identify which one? My this one probably. If I remove this, it might actually work. Nope, okay. Not so lucky, but if I was creating a new dashboard, let's say we create a new dashboard instead. Program, dashboard, gonna keep it simple. And let's selectively bring charts into this. This is going into slightly more technical areas. So I don't wanna necessarily go down that path right now but I can add filtering or like some kind of filtering on the dashboard itself. So let's see if this works on this one. Can I do program name? Nope, okay. So this chart doesn't work. Program, call me Griselda. That's okay. Okay, well, you brought it up so I'm <laughs> curious to- You are interested in um the whole different program issue and mm -hmm. then assigning clients to it that's all it was gotcha it's generally easy enough to achieve as long as oh there we go program name so let's say i've got a bunch of different charts that are centered around reporting on program and all the data related to the program um salesforce dashboard capabilities this might be better addressed in like a um full cap like another session on the full capabilities of reporting and dashboards in salesforce um but yeah just to give you a quick sneak peek i can say hey i want to see i want to be able to filter down by working families um i think i had healthy families and so on and so forth and unfortunately i don't have much data in here i probably should have spent a little bit more time but now that i have that filter there i can say hey just show me all these metrics, but just filter it down to anything that's related to working families. So Salesforce is gonna take a few minutes to crunch, crunch, crunch. Okay, right now we have healthy families and working families. So hopefully this is gonna give us the necessary, I take a second here. Come on. Well, if I don't have some, oh, okay. For whatever reason, it wasn't showing that on the chart, which is usually not normal. Might be my weird Wi-Fi. That's okay. <laughs> okay. If I don't have something go wrong in my <laughs> demos, I'm not doing something right. But needless to say, I have tons of dashboards where you can create some dashboard level filters that you can then go ahead and apply and all the data and metrics that you have on that dashboard are gonna filter down to that specific filter. And that way you can have kind of one dashboard, gives you an overarching image and then gives you the ability to drill down to see specific metrics uh, or metri metrics tied to a specific program or a specific uh, demographic that you're dealing with or a specific time frame within which you might have delivered those services and whatnot. So all these things are again, not specific to the BMM, that's just common to Salesforce in general, whether you're tracking fundraising, delivery of services, marketing and communications, volunteering, et cetera, et cetera. All of these are like generic functionalities. 
Um, so yeah, I mean, I think the only thing we didn't touch upon is program cohorts, but, and that's again, just grouping all your program um, engagements into one specific, you know, sets of cohorts. But other than that, um, I think we've touched upon all the functionality. Again, this is a new module, it's free of cost. They're just starting out on it. And frankly, everything I've seen so far is quite impressive compared to- Yeah, I wish we had it before because we were doing it by campaign, you know? Right, um, right, yeah. This makes it a lot easier. Yes, and again, with campaigns, if you're using campaigns, you're actually using the Salesforce for licenses to getting access to campaigns. With this, I'm sure their intent was to remove access to like certain objects like campaigns and whatnot. If y'all aren't familiar with Salesforce, don't worry about it, but basically you can get a cheaper Salesforce license and use something like the program management module. So lower, lower your overall cost of Salesforce licensing if your organization goes beyond those 10 uh, free users that you get with your grant um, and be able to, again, just scale at a lower price. And that's one of the chief, I guess, um, attractions to the PMM. Okay, awesome. I think that's as much as I have on the content side. What kind of questions might we have in addition to anything I might've already gotten along the way? My issue will be getting the mindset for my staff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And again, you know, if you have, Mary Jane, if you have, if what you have is working for you, if there's no incentive to change, well, there are some cool things over here, I'm sure, that you might have seen that might just might make it worth it. Um, well, I look at, we're starting a new program. So when mm -hmm. I hire that person, if I just train them on this program management yeah. and get it all yeah. set up, then they don't yeah. have to think about it, so. Right, absolutely. I also wonder if it might be, if you have similar objects, but they're just, you know, called something else, you could like override the labels to call them what you call them. And that way they're clicking on tab names that are familiar and the objects are familiar. But yeah, like a mid-transition, yeah, starting a new employee, we're on the new module and then hopefully that person gets to use some of the functionality that comes with this unless you all, you all have already built a lot of custom functionality that works for you. If you haven't, then clearly this is attractive. Um, like that might be also another incentive um, to have someone piloted to the rest of your employees who then might wanna say, hey, okay, I'm gonna learn this new thing if it saves me time. And if it doesn't, then don't use it, but knowing the way Salesforce works is they're probably gonna layer on more um, resources, more innovation on this module if it starts taking off. Then there's more automated capabilities, more you know, custom UIs and widgets that they create for um, like mass development and whatnot. Okay, other questions, thoughts, ideas? Oops, I see some messages popping up on chat. Okay, awesome. Well, thanks. I appreciate it, Drew. Once absolutely. again, absolutely. <laughs> no worries. Well, thanks so much for joining y'all. Um, I'm gonna stop recording here and pass this on to Eli, who's gonna put it up somewhere at some point, and hope to see y'all at our next meeting. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Dora. Uh, yeah. I. Uh, well, not not.